of Jesus this morning. Yeah. I mean, thank God for grace and mercy. Second Corinthians uh, chapter 12. I do thank God uh, for all of the couples that went to that marriage seminar. Jacob spoke about the glorious chicken. I missed out on that chicken. Me and my wife, when we showed up, it was, we were out of chicken. Amen. So I stayed with a mashed potato, and I had revival with my mashed potatoes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we enjoyed it. It was great. Uh, I do appreciate that. We took 12 couples. That was 24 of us. Uh, amen. I am grateful for that. Uh, we are planning to do it again next year. I'm going to ask the pastor to have extra chicken. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And so uh, we are planning to take a lot more couples next year. Who knows how all this can turn out? I mean, I'm telling you, wonderful time. We're going to have all of the pictures, uh, hopefully, by this Wednesday. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, if I get all the stuff to our sister to help us with. And so uh, we, that way you can kind of enjoy uh, what we did there. Second Corinthians chapter 12. And when I was a kid, uh, a young boy, uh, one of the fun things, you know, I grew up where cell phones were not around and, uh, uh, you know, PlayStation was not around. And so my, my, um, my thing to do as a young boy to, you know, have fun was great stuff, what boys should do. And that is fights, hallelujah, in the streets, uh, uh, playing hide and seek. Uh, you know, hunting, shooting with arrows and uh, slingshots and all kinds of stuff. So that was my fun, uh, you know, as I grew up. And I grew up very close to a forest. In my nation, there is no jungles. But in South America, there is a lot of forest. It's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, the ocean and um, very green. And so where I'm from is it's a small nation. Not a lot of people know it, but it's, it's literally, literally, I'm telling you, it's like a paradise. It's just a beautiful place. And so a few, probably a couple of miles away from my house was a forest that me and my friends, we used to go out hunt and just uh, with slingshots and all kinds of stuff. And so uh, we used to mess with the animals. I remember this owner used to have a farm. He had a couple of bulls and my big heights uh, with my friends was to go and hit the bull over the head with a slingshot and run from it. Uh, it was good stuff. As a boy, you would get in trouble. And so... Uh, one day, you know, my mom got me a, 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 a BB gun, and that was high-tech stuff for me. It's like, oh, my gosh, now I'm moving up. So now I'm a real hunter with a BB gun. And so uh, we had this forest, and in this forest, there used to be a, uh, bushes that had uh, blueberries. We used to go out, hunt around the areas, uh, eat these blueberries. And so inside of these bushes of blueberries, you're talking about massive, massive, like probably as big uh, as a half of this building, places where you will be thick with bushes of blueberries, and you could actually go inside. Uh, we were kids, and so uh, we would go and hunt these, uh, these all kinds of animals that they would hide themselves. One of them was weasels, uh, and uh, we, these, these animals would go there, and me and my friends would go and hunt them down. And so uh, as a you know, 10-year-old, 11-year-old boy, man, this was a blast. This was like the thing to do. But what I learned quickly out of hunting that uh, and doing all of that was that when you would hunt these weasels uh, in these uh, 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 blackberry bushes, was that these bushes had a lot of thorns, wicked thorns. And so a lot of times you would go in the morning and we would spend three, four, five hours many times hunting. My parents were divorced. You know, I pretty much grew up in the streets. And so, you know, we would spend five, six hours doing all kinds of crazy stuff, hunting. But by the end of the day, you will see the result of doing what we had done. We would be filled with uh, scratches and, uh, in our face. Uh, the reason was, it was because uh, we were going through these bushes, uh, and we would have to, amen, go into these bushes, and we would deal with all kinds of thorns. And we learn a lesson quickly in life. And that lesson is that thorns are not fun. Once you get hit, and especially if you break one thorn in your own flesh and begins to stay with you, you realize that one little thorn can literally drive you nuts. It can alter even the way you think. And so in our text, we're going to find that Paul was dealing with a thorn. And I believe that I have the mind of God today. I want you to open your heart. I know that God's going to minister to people today. I want to pray or preach a message that I entitled, The Blessings of a Thorn. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7. 
to keep me from becoming conceited, because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast boast all of the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Father, I thank you so much for the Holy Ghost that is in this place. I pray right now, God, that you will help us by the blood of Christ. Lord, anoint my lips to preach your word. God, I pray if there is somebody here that is unsaved, save them by your grace. And I pray for your people that you will minister to your congregation. Give us revelation and insight today by the blood of the Lamb and God's people say, And I want to talk about the reality of thorns in life. Thorns are part of life. If you own a rose garden or if you have any type of garden, I notice even in some of the trees that we use here in the city of Casa Grandes, they are pretty, but they actually have a lot of thorns. And many times you can learn that very quickly by having a revelation that you probably don't like. And so the reality of thorns is that life has thorns to offer you. This is true in real life as far as physically But also, spiritually, this is also true. That if you live life long enough, you understand that life has thorns to offer you. We're talking about experiences where they are painful. Amen. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian or not. The reality of life is this, that you, amen, as you begin to grow and begin to live life, you understand that life many times has painful experiences to offer you. In our text, this is where we find the Apostle Paul. Paul is one of the greatest Christians that ever lived. Yet having said that though, what we find here in our text is that Paul, amen, is dealing with a painful circumstance. We really don't know what kind of thorn he's talking about. We don't know if this was a physical problem or if this was uh, an emotional or spiritual dynamic we really don't know many people have uh, scholars believe that this he was talking about people i mean difficult people that were coming against them whether whatever the case was the reality is when you come to our text we find paul in a very difficult uh, circumstance in his life the bible says he identifies this problem as a thorn in the flesh Now, out of our text, even though we don't really know exactly what kind of thorn he's talking about, we can clearly see that this thorn actually was not very pleasing to him. We know a couple of things. One of them is that this thorn was coming from hell, the devil. He says, amen, in verse 7, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. So what we quickly gather here, we don't really know what kind of problem Paul was dealing about, but we do know one thing for certain. This thorn was coming from hell. He identifies that this is a messenger of Satan. And how many know that Satan does not have anything good to offer? Right? So the reality is this, is this thorn was not a good thorn, and there is no such a thing as a good thorn. It doesn't matter how small the thorn is. Once you get stuck by a thorn, I mean, it will literally begin to mess with you. And so number one, we identify that this is not literally from God. This is literally a satanic assault against his life. Number two, we also identify that this thorn is literally causing him pain. 
he says, the storm, this messenger from Satan, literally is tormenting me. Verse 8, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. So what we learn here is that not only Paul is dealing with something that, amen, demonic, but it's also now causing the Apostle Paul much harm much pain, discomfort, and to the point where the Bible says now Paul is pleading with God. He's not just praying, he's pleading. That's a little bit different. How many know that you can many times pray, but literally not mean what you're saying? Right? It's like when you're praying for your food and blessing your food. For the most part, you're so stinking hungry, you're not even thinking about God. You just want to get over it and eat. Right? Can you say amen? Lord, thank you, Jesus, for the food. Amen. And you start devouring the food. You're praying, but you're really not all that spiritual there, you know? And when you're dealing with a brother that is very spiritual, have you ever been there where you just go out to eat with somebody and say, hey, brother, can you pray for the food? And they take like 15 minutes praying. Lord Jesus, I pray you bless for the food. It's like, come on, get over it. Why? Because your flesh is hungry. You want to eat. Right? And so you're praying, but you're not connecting. But when you're pleading, it's different. When you're pleading now, now you're not just blabbling words in the air. Now you're crying. You are pleading. You are begging God. And so in our text, this is where Paul is at. He's dealing with a thorn. And there is one thing that comes to mind when you think about thorns. Only one. And that is pain. When you think about thorns and you hear the message, a thorn in my flesh, you're not thinking about roses. You're not thinking about a beautiful experience that you're going through life. That's not what you think about. When you talk about the topic of amen, thorns, there's only one thing that comes to mind is pain, is discomfort. It is literally amen, a painful experience. And this is exactly where we find the Apostle Paul. Why? Because this is the reality of life. That in life, amen, Jesus said, you will have, John 16, verse 33, in life on this earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. That is a part of life. And even Jesus himself, he experienced that. Even Jesus himself being God in the flesh, we know that he ended up in the cross bleeding for humanity, paying a heavy price, experiencing pain. And the reason is, is because we are living in a fallen world. Can you say amen? And the result of living in a fallen world is that you will experience pain. Whether you do everything right or not. See, a lot of times people have the vague and weird mentality. And this comes from religion that taught us that, you know what? If you're a good boy, nothing is going to happen to you. I got news for you. You can be as good as you can be and you can still with the reality of life. Amen. You can find yourself doing everything right. But I want to tell you something. We live in a fallen world. In the moment that Adam and Eve fell and rejected God, the Bible says they opened the world to a curse. We are dealing with the fallout of the curse. And whether you're good or not, whether you're a Christian or not, the reality is this life will offer you thorns. We don't like thorns. We really don't like pain. Can you say amen? How many loves pain in this place? Raise your hand. For the most part, none of us do. There are some people that they're a little weird and odd. And sometimes you wonder, it's like, really, are you human beings? Because some people, love, you know, but, but those are different. For the, for the most part, we really don't like pain. We really don't. I mean, there's nothing fun about it. And in our text, Paul is struggling with that. But I want to consider the second point. This is really what I want to bring you about. Because this really came out of my own life this week uh, uh, out of dealing with circumstances, real circumstances, real painful circumstances uh, out of people's lives. Listen to me. Paul is dealing with a thorn. We don't know what type of thorn, but he's dealing with a thorn. And he's asking God to 
remove it from him. Why? Because it is simple and it's obvious. We don't like pain. None of us do. Amen. But as you read the text, and this is where God spoke to me. I was dealing with some dynamics, and I'm actually speaking with my wife, and I have to uh, deal with some dynamics that they're not pleasant. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually speaking with my wife, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually just in a quest here, and I'm, I'm actually praying about some things and thinking about some things. And all of a sudden, I felt like God spoke to me about this text, because in our text, there is a powerful message that a lot of times we miss. We don't grab. We don't grab it because we don't want to, because we are nervous when it comes to pain. Now, listen to me, okay? I'm not preaching to you a gospel away from the gospel. I'm preaching to you out of the Bible, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in our text, Paul, through this experience, is revealing to us something powerful that we got to consider this morning. Paul is dealing with a painful thorn. He's in torment. He's not digging this. He's not liking this. But as you begin to read the text, you understand that out of this thorn, the result of Paul's thorn in the flesh, even though he was not digging it, and he's asking God, please help me, take it away from me, what we find is we find some blessings that come out of this. And I want you to open your mind You need to let let me speak today, hear me through. Before you judge what I'm saying, hear me through and let me say everything today, okay? What we find is that in this text, there is actually a few blessings that come out of this circumstance. Now, you might say, well, that's crazy. What you're telling me, Pastor, is that the problems in my life are supposed to be a blessing. They sure don't. And how many know that they don't? How many know that pain, thorns, and problems don't feel like a blessing, right? And as a matter of fact, we, we, don't, we don't want to accept it as a blessing. We reject it. We pray against it. And I'm telling you, you should. You should pray, God, help me. When you're going through problems and you're going through difficult seasons, you, know, you need to pray, God, give me a break out of this. Help me. But I want to tell you something. In our text... We find Paul praying, God, get this thorn out of me. And you find that God never took the thorn away from him. God didn't come to the rescue of how Paul was demanding. Nevertheless, God did help him. And so we find, and I want to consider three things, three blessings that can come out out of you and I dealing with thorns. Okay? Number one, we find... That the thorn in the flesh for Paul, it literally turned a blessing towards him in regards of keeping him humble. Listen to verse 7. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly, surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh a messenger of Satan to torment me. Think about this. Now, for you to understand that verse, you have to start in verse 1. Verse 1, Paul begins to tell us that he knew a man, whether in the flesh or in the spirit, he didn't know, but he knew a man who literally went to paradise. He saw revelations. They were so deep that they were not, he was not even allowed to say it to people. And so he's talking about this man. And obviously when you read it and you study the Bible and you read commentaries and theologians talking about this, text, you know that Paul is literally speaking about himself. He's saying how God, by His divine grace, had allowed him to see paradise. And I'm here to tell you, amen, we're not talking about a guy getting high on dope, speaking and seeing visions. We're talking about Paul, the man of God. He's actually seen paradise. He's cut up to the third heavens, and he's seen powerful revelation. And so how many know that that's heavy-duty stuff? But what Paul says is this, so that I will not be conceited, so that I will not be prideful, there was given to me a thorn in my flesh. So there is a message there. The first message that we find 
is that one of the blessings out of these thorns in his flesh was to keep him humble. Give me an amen. Hallelujah. It was to keep him humble. He says it so that I will not be boasting around. There was given to me a thorn in my flesh. And I want to tell you something. Listen to what I'm about to say. There is something about pain. There is something about a thorn. There is something about you and I experiencing problems in life that if you allow them and you handle them correctly, literally has the capacity of keeping you humble. Thorns have the ability to remind you that you are a human being. How many know that many times if we're not careful, we forget that? Especially when everything is going well in our lives, right? You have money in the bank, everything is going good, your wife loves you, amen, she, amen, she is grateful, your husband appreciates you, your job is taking care of you, you're receiving bonus, and without understanding, when everything goes good, if you're not careful, you can disconnect from reality. And that is that not everybody many times is experiencing the same blessings that you are. And with that having said, there is something in every single one of us, and that is called ego. And we many times don't understand that we tend to be prideful people. And when we begin to go with life, and life begins to favor us, if you're not careful, you begin to embrace mentality that is not healthy. You begin to embrace a mentality that you deserve this because you're being a good person. And in that moment, listen to me, what happens is this. When a thorn comes your way, it reminds you, guess what? You are a human being. Oh my gosh, it hurts. Yes, it does. Why? Because you're not Superman. You're not that girl. Amen. You're not Superwoman. You're a real human being. And so Paul is saying, this thorn that I've been praying for God to remove, literally was given to me to keep me humble. You might say, well, pastor, that's not my problem. I don't have a pride problem. I got news for you. Yes, you do. Can you say amen? Don't give me that religious look on me. Uh 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 uh, uh, That's not me. I got many sins, pastor, but my problem is not pride. Really? When somebody really talks to you wrong, when somebody talks behind your back, doesn't it do something to you? What, 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 what did you say? You're messing with my image? I'll show you who I am. Don't you be talking to me, boy. Right? <laughs> Amen. When your ego gets deflated, when somebody robs you wrong or when things don't go, what happens is we tend many times to begin to dabble. And if you're not careful, listen to me. This is what God spoke to me about. I'm not advocating pain. Listen, I'm not preaching the old Catholic doctrine that you have to suffer to please Jesus. Are you with me? That's not the gospel. But having said that, though, we understand that the Bible teaches us that it was because of this thorn, Paul is saying, it was given to me. I've been praying God take it away. God never took it away. Why? Because this thorn, it was given to me so that I would not be conceited. And so the revelation that we have, number one, is this. The thorn literally was allowing Paul to feel human. Why? Because now he can actually relate to other people. See, sometimes it's good to go through problems. You know why? Because then you learn to relate to other people. When you never have a problem, it's hard for you to relate to others. If you never have a financial problem, when somebody comes to you and says, man, I'm not, I, you know, I don't know what's happening, man. I'm having problem finance. If you never had that problem before, you're not going to relate. And you're going to tell them, well, it's because you're not tithing. You're robbing God, you devil. Well, sometimes people are faithful. They're givers and they still have problems. 
right? And there's something about a thorn in your flesh that keeps you reminding you, hey, yeah, I'm a human being, and now it is because of that painful experience, now you're going to be able to relate to others. And I want to tell you something, thorns keep you humble. I don't like pain. Again, listen to me, I hate pain. I don't enjoy it a bit. This last week where I hurt my leg last Saturday and my hip, I couldn't even walk. It's, by the way, it's a miracle. Thank you for praying for me. It's a miracle. I'm walking today. Listen to me. I'm not in my house loving it. Like, yeah, I love it. I hated it. It's painful. It's messing with me. But guess what? There's something about pain that brings you a reality check. You are not Superman. You're a human being. And when now somebody else comes to me and tells me I have problems in my legs or I have a pain, you know what? I'm going to sympathize and I'm going to understand them. Because now I know how it feels. But see, if you're not careful, we can draw call. Listen to me. Listen to me. We can be so disconnected from reality that when we're not dealing with no thorns, you know, somebody comes to you and is like, hey, man, you know what? Pray for me. I'm dealing with pain. I'll get over it. You must be sinning. Like Job's friends, oh, you, 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 you know, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not having faith, brother. I, I, I'm telling you, listen to me. I know how we think. I'm a Christian too. You're not, you're, you're not having faith. You unbeliever, devil. Sometimes they can have faith. Paul is a real Christian. Can you say, man? He's praying. He's doing everything right. But yet he's dealing with a thorn and he's keeping them humble. Don't ever grow so much in your Christianity where you get so high in your head you disconnect from reality. Paul, God, I'm sorry, spoke to Saul, amen, and he told them when you were small in your own eyes, when you were small in your own eyes, didn't I make you big? Listen, there was something there. God is dealing with his pride. And he's saying, when you were small, when you were dealing with issues and problems, and again, I'm not preaching and I'm not advocating that you have to walk in your knees and crucify your own self to please Jesus. That's not what I'm talking about. But having said that, though, there was a reality here. God allowed the thorn in when Paul's life flesh to teach him a few things. And sometimes, beloved, if you would allow your problems to speak to you, they can teach you some stuff. Number two, a lot of times, not only keeps us humble, but many times, if you handle it right, listen to me, it can bring you closer to God. The Bible says, Paul says, I pleaded. Remember, pleading is not the same as praying. I pleaded three times. When you see three times in the Bible, okay? When you see things that happens three times, or there is a, 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 message, a, a, there is a message being communicated here. So what Paul is saying is this. You know what? This thorn literally caused me to stop. Understand that God wants to keep me humble, and this thorn caused me to come and get a hold of God. Now listen to what I'm about to say carefully. Problems can cause two things in your life. Number one, problems can separate you from God, make you bitter and confused and angry. And I've seen a lot of people having problems, and instead of handling it right, they get bitter against God, bitter against life, and they, back, they make a mess out of their lives. Or your problems can bring you closer to God. The Bible says, he says, I pleaded three times. This thorn is bringing Paul closer to relationship. And I want to tell you something. This is why most of us were here today. You know why we're here today? It's because in the world, we had a lot of problems. And thank God, God allowed those problems to get close for us to bring us to church. Right? Only a few of us, we had the lottery won and had everything perfect and came to church and said, God, I want to serve you. For the most part, we were all jacked up, and it was our problems that got us close to Jesus. 
Right? Well, it works the same way. And so there is another message here, and that message is this. And again, I am not telling you, amen, that God is going to make you suffer and make you miserable so that he can bring you amen, closer. That's not the message. If you're getting that message from me, you're missing the whole point. I don't believe that God uses suffering to teach us every lesson of life and communicate. I don't, I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is this. In this given moment, the thorn in the flesh of Paul was used as an avenue, and literally there were blessings that we can draw. Amen. It was a blessing to keep him humble. It brought him closer to Jesus to the point where now he's pleading, he's I mean, crying out to God. And I want to tell you something. It is at that place that if you handle it right, it will help you. If you don't handle it right, it can mess you up. Why? Because when you have problems, if you don't handle it right, this is where you feel God the farthest. Can you say amen? And even Jesus teaches us that. How do we know that? When he's hanging on the cross, what did he say? My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? So he's experiencing pain, and there was a process of time in his life where he's thinking the father left him. And we understand that that is the natural reaction of pain. But having said that, though, is this. What we find is that Paul now is pleading to God. And I want to tell you something. In your problems, the worst mistake you can do is run away and get bitter with God. The best thing you can do is when you have a thorn in your flesh, you need to learn to pray. You need to learn to plead with God and come before God and ask God for clarity and direction. And I want to tell you something. If you allow God to do it, He will do it. Are you with me? The last thing I want to talk is that also thorns will help you trust and depend on God. See, this again goes touch. It goes hand on hand uh, with pride. See, we are very independable people. We don't like to depend from nobody. Can you say amen? Especially in America. Listen to me. We are our own. Nobody's going to own me. And you know what? Uh, this is why you have all these rights and the women's rights and the women want to be the same and all this stuff. They Now they got to go and throw grenades to be the same and yada, yada, yada. God when you serve them, God many times will allow things to come in your way to teach you to be humble, to bring you closer to him. And at the same time, God is going to bring you and teach you to learn to trust on him. And there is nothing like a thorn in your flesh that will teach you that. There is nothing like you having pain. If you don't believe me, read the book of Psalms. Why do we love the book of Psalms? You know why? Because we find King David dealing with a thorn in his flesh called Saul. And Saul is wanting to kill him, wants to destroy him. And what do we read? We read, amen, King David, amen. He's a young man. He's running for his life. But he writes one of the most powerful psalms that we can relate, that we can read upon, and we can relate to that. Why? Because here is God. Remember, God had not left David alone. God was allowing the thorn on his flesh called Saul to teach David profound lessons that he was going to need in the kingdom. He was teaching him how to trust and depend on God. He was teaching David that you are not saved by the strong arm of battle. You are saved by protecting yourself with God, trusting that God is going to work it out. And I want to tell you something. If there is anything good that can come out of the thorn, is this. If you would allow God to use and allow your problems to become a blessing, it is many times those problems that teach you how to trust and wait on God. To trust in God when you don't see anything, when you're not understanding, when you even think that God is against you. You disconnect from all of that. You say to your heart and soul, I'm not going to be bitter. I'm not going to take it against God. God, I don't really understand what you're doing. I don't know all the dynamics, but I do know one thing. You are good. 
And I'm going to trust you. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask you, God, to remove this thorn in my flesh. But if you don't, then I'm still going to trust you. Now listen to verse 9, and I'm going to wrap all of this. But he said to me, now this is God. Okay? God is speaking to Paul. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. What do we find there? We find God's provision of grace through a thorn. Most of us, we talk about the grace of God. We sing about the grace of God. But listen to me. Most of Christians today in America don't have a clue what the grace of God is all about. We sing about the grace. We talk about the grace. But listen to me. It is when you have a thorn in your flesh and you cannot take it out, you cannot change the fact that it keeps you humble, it brings you closer to God, it teaches you to trust and depend on God, and then also, listen, it will introduce you to the provision of the grace of God in your life like nothing else will. There is something about problems and pain that if you handle them right, listen, God says, my grace is sufficient for you. What is he saying there? What God is telling Paul, and he might be telling you this morning, is this. You don't need to remove that thorn, Paul, out of your life to be, amen, who I want you to be. All you need, Paul, is my grace. That's all you need. You need to learn to depend on me, to trust in me, to enjoy my grace. And this is a revelation that I had this week as I'm praying through some things, as I'm dealing with some very painful experiences. I'm trying to get my head around these problems. And I felt like God spoke to me and told me, you know what? What you need, what my people need is the grace that I got to offer. And the grace of God that you can experience, can only come many times as you're saying, God, take away this thorn. When you're going through problems, listen to me, it can be most, the most beautiful, intimate time with Christ that you ever have. Listen, I know we don't like pain. I know we don't like it. Listen to me. But I have seen many, many people. I have seen people in the house of God go through the most... Amen. Problematic, painful experiences of their lives. But when they keep their hearts right, they get close to God. They experience a grace that is supernatural. I'm a living testimony. It's like you find a treasure. Nobody finds it. Nobody knows. But that treasure is there. And I'm here to tell you there is a treasure called grace. It's from heaven. It's from God. And if you learn to depend and to live in that grace, God is saying it's sufficient. You don't need nothing else. You don't need the world. You don't need more money. You don't need another job. You don't need another relationship. All you need is what God is giving you, and you'll be okay. But the problem is this. We don't want that. We many times push away from the grace of God that is sufficient for us, and we want to do it our own way. We want to remove the thorns out of our own lives because we think if I remove this thorn, I'll be better off. Listen to me. How many know that God knows better? He knows better. And he knew that. You know what? For Paul's life, the answer was not to remove that thorn. It was for Paul to learn to depend on his grace. Now, I'm not saying that all of your problems were made by God and you don't have to pray against them. I'm not saying that. You're going to hear me sermons that I'm going to preach. Do not accept what life gives you. You need to fight things through and you need to take dominion. But having said that, though, I'm telling you, if you learn to touch God and allow God to touch you, even a thorn can become the biggest blessing of your entire life. I want every head bowed and every...